Hey guys, welcome back to Science and Science Only and in today's video, I am going to do a tutorial on how to make a puzzle using Tinkercad. Yes, we will be using Tinkercad to make a puzzle. So this is what we're going to be making. So we're going to make a puzzle cube, not the ones like the twisty ones, so the Rubik's Cube. Those are too complicated and the end result will be very poor. Well, the quality of the cube. So this is what we'll be making. We'll be making like some random pieces that when put together in a specific order make a cube you can also do different shapes but I'm gonna go with the cube because it's more you have more of integers instead of like 0.333 for example it's more or it's more simple as well during the video you can also start building with me or you can finish watching my video and make an even more complex variation of the one I'm going to build. So let's start off with our cube. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, so 60 millimeters in all dimensions, so all sides. So this is the size of our puzzles, well not technically but we'll be using this as how as a brief saying of how the end result will be, so how big it will be and we'll also be using this to carve out other pieces. I will be giving the cube three, three layers, so 60 divided by 3 is 20. So three, three layers in all dimensions. So I'll be starting off building with a complex shape and then using that to carve out other pieces. So. So this is my first complex shape, or a compound for another word, um, it is by 40 by 60. So this is how it looks, it has a bar, well, it's, well it has a cube coming out down. So down and then an L shape. So this is going to be our first piece. So I'm going to place this piece over this part of the cube. So this is where the piece will be. And I'm going to make some more pieces so that it will be fit. So it will fit in the right spot. So I'll bring out another cube. So this cube will be underneath this bit, so over here, so over here. It will go directly underneath, I'm, I'm gonna add some extensions and group this to uh, and make it a different compound, we'll make it a compound, compound shape. You can also hide this cube. So that is 
click and clicking the like double button and then if you want it to reappear again you'll just have to click this Maybe another one over here. Grouping them four together. So we got another piece. Um, continuing on, I'll also get another cube. You can also do a 4x4 variation or you can also don't really have to use the 4x4 and use and change the dimensions to your own. So instead of going 40 to 20 you can also go 30. You don't really have to obey the rules but I'm using it to make it a little bit more simple. You can also change the color of every piece you make, so it'll it will kind of help you identify that they're all separate pieces, and you'll get conf you don't have to get confused and recheck. I'll do this to forty. So I built another one here. You can also change the amount of pieces you'll be using. But it really determines on like, so if you're using 27 pieces, they're all gonna have to be cubes. Or you're gonna have to not ignore the layer by layer bit that I'm going. So I'm using th three layers. So one, two, three, three layers. I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm not going to group this to any other piece. And I'll start constructing over here. Yeah, so you can also duplicate other pieces. I'm going to duplicate this piece because I know that this piece will fit perfectly over here. So.
if I push this over here yeah so this fits perfectly over here yes This will be the last piece, filling in the cube. Alright, make this 20. Push this back to make 60. So this is a very simple version, there's also more complex version with more pieces, although you do have to ignore the layer by layer bit. Yeah, so before printing them, you need to arrange the pieces so that it is easier for the printer to pin, print. Sorry. So that if this piece was like this, then it'll be much easier for the printer to pin, print. And if it was more like this, then you'll need um, the printer's gonna print well support areas over here, and that's gonna use up more of your filament. And also, it'll take you more time to destroy or break up all of those extra support pieces. So there's no point in wasting your filament and just do it like this. Oh yes, I forgot to mention. So for the cube, you can also use it to make sure that um, that um, the whole puzzle is 60 by 60 by 60 in volume. So I already made this perfect. So make sure you used every piece so here I have and you can also delete all of them but you can also use the other the one that you just built and take a screenshot of it if you are gonna give it to someone else but if this is for you you're gonna forget anyway so might as well just delete it So that is pretty simple, but you also have to maybe use a sandpaper to trim a little bit um, as it might be a little rough to fit in all the pieces together. 
so sanding will help it well put it together more easily and that's it this is one way of making puzzles there is also another way you can use 3d printing to make puzzles and I'm going to use I'm going to create a new file for that yeah so that's not why I named it it names something well it names the file randomly So this is the second way of making puzzles. So you go to shape generator and click featured and you get this. You can also use uh, and you can also make puzzles using this. So this is kind of like a jigsaw jigsaw but without all the connective thingies where it's random. You can also change the number of cells that's very convenient and also the size of the tile itself so this is a 20 by 20 and we're gonna make a puzzle out of that you only need this and then you can go to basic shapes and a cube that's all you need so I think 20 is not enough maybe 40 and I'm gonna increase the number of cells in this time so make it around 25 25 yes and you can change the shape of these and also the order so this is 20 cells but in a different arrangement well not arrangement but you can also change the shape of it so you can do that using the randomizer variable you can also change the spacing of the tiles themselves so, like that Yeah, so 0.5 is enough. So since you have gaps between these bits, you can use a 40 by 40 um, hole in this case. So 40 by 40. So for this one you can use this because these spacings will become less and even squished so it is more helpful. And if you do a 40 by a 41 by 41, it's the pay it has too much space. So for this it's gonna hold it tightly. Sorry, hold um Yeah, so that's alright. You can also change the height, but um, the varying heights, so I don't really like this So I'm just gonna go to, I'm just not gonna use that, but you can use it if you want to And I'll use a cube to fit all that in Make it 42 by 42. Change this to 2. And then you can put the hole over here. Done. Um, 
yeah, that's perfect. So you can fuse that together. Oh, I forgot about this. So you also need to change the heights. My bad, you, you need to change it to, let's say, three. Three is good. Pull this upwards. By one. And then under it. Yeah, so that looks good. So this will fit in there. Like that. So someone's gonna assemble that. So someone's gonna be building that. So I'm going to change the randomizer to make it even harder. Yeah, so this is a good one. So this big piece will was is gonna throw the well, who else is going to solve the puzzle because this looks like a 90 degree, but it's not and it goes like in the middle of the puzzle. So is this, and uh, this, yeah that's it, that's, and also this maybe. So this is a simple version, you can also add something over here. If you use a text and change its height to 1 and make it a hole, you can also write something, you obviously have to change the dimensions, but if you write something like, let's say hello, After you have solved this, we'll find out what it says. You can also add something below this, or yeah, you can add something below this or inside this, so make it go through the entire thing. And it also says a message over there. Yeah, so that's it. So this is how you can design. Puzzle. This is how you can design this puzzle. So I'm gonna put this message on. Yeah, so. You know, something simple. You can all, you can change whatever you're gonna write on this. Pattern. So that is make it to the hole. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. Okay. 
Yeah, and then basically keep repeating this pattern again. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, so you can also do this. So engrave the ends of it. Feel free to. But make sure you cut off these bits. So make them a solid and use like a hole or something. And then chop these off. So make this a group, solid and thirty-nine. So we need a shape that is thirty-nine. 39 by 2 or by 1.5 actually I'll make this a .5. oh yes right. yes hide this Never mind, you don't really need the 39 bit. You just need to cover this. Um, this, 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 F. Yeah, so now you can hide this shape and then uh, render this. So group it all up and you get a square. So now you need to turn that square a hole, and hide this, and then fuse this together. You do have to change the shapes. Yes, and. Yeah, so that's it. So these are the designs. If you don't want to do this, I'm not forcing you to. You don't have to. Although there are some disadvantages, as I just realized now, that the small pieces might fall off. So yes. Yes. But I think this could be easily fixed. dimension to
Yeah, although it's not really a hexagon this bit. So I've just showed you that. So you can make it smaller, but I'm not gonna do that. You can also do a triangle version, a circle version, or basically, um, and also a square version, or any compound shape that can repeat itself. Maybe a pentagon version. So the pendrel's tiling. But you have to carve out some more pieces for that. So for the hexagon, you only need one a hexagon. For a pendrel's tiling, you need a you need more than one. I think you need two different but you need to use golden ratios and such as that and it's too complicated so I'm not gonna do that and yeah that's it for puzzle number two so that is it for today's video but I will be making some more 3d printable puzzles in the future and even more complex versions of them so I'm gonna make another video about this in the future but more complex in the future video, we'll also be using some triangles and cylinders instead of just using a square plane. So thank you for watching this video. I'll also be putting the Tinkercad files in there, so the puzzle files. And you can also, well, modify mine and hopefully get something better than mine. So I'll see you next time.